Hi friends, uh, so in the last week we've seen a series of high profile progressive male comedians become confronted with shitty comedy that they did in the past. Uh, James Gunn, Trevor Noah and Dan Harmon have all come under fire for jokes or sketches that they did five to ten years ago that have been either racist uh, or made light of rape or pedophilia. All three have offered apologies and the consequences so far have been that Gunn has been fired uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 by Disney uh, and Harmon has quit Twitter. Now I've got a lot of thoughts and feelings about this uh, and I want to talk to you about it. But let me start off by saying that this video is not a defence of shitty comedy, uh, nor am I worried about political correctness gone mad, uh, or freedom of speech, or, or whatever. I, I encourage all comedians to avoid being shit, but I do have a certain amount of empathy for this situation, because there was also a time when I told shitty jokes that I am not proud of today. Back in the day, particularly uh, university improv ten or more years ago, I was also throwing out all sorts of shitty jokes, songs and sketches that were racist, sexist, ableist, homophobic and sometimes even transphobic. Now what's worrying about that time is not so much that I did that stuff, but that audiences fucking adored it. And I think that's what's missing from the conversation at the moment about Gunn, Noah and Harmon. Yes, these jokes were shit. But society was complicit in encouraging that kind of shit to be prevalent. That's not an excuse. But it is a point that's worth making. Because it's actually a very positive thing. The fact that these kinds of jokes don't fly anymore means that society has changed for the better. Audiences have become more empathetic to the hurt that these kinds of jokes cause and comedians are now being encouraged to find laughs without resorting to shock or punching down. One of the first things that we wrote as the Axis of Awesome was a series of three songs. Uh, each was a parody of the song How to Save a Life by The Fray. Uh, and we'd pepper the three songs across a set. Uh, the first was called How to Bake a Scone. Uh, and it was just baking instructions set to the original music. The second was called How to Catch a Duck. Uh, and it was an innocuous description on how to lure waterfowl. Uh, and the third featured a graphic description of murder of a sex worker and was called How to Kill a Hooker. It's not something I'm super proud of anymore. But at the time, it was one of our most popular songs and it went down a treat with audiences. Uh, but over time, we started to get contacted by sex workers uh, and advocates against gendered violence. And after a number of conversations, we decided to stop playing the song. We listened and we changed. And I am now able to use this story as a tool to inspire that change in others. And when I speak to young comics, I can talk about how my sensibilities have evolved and how I became a better person and a better comic by being mindful of the power that one wields on stage. I think the unfortunate thing with these situations at the moment is that there is an instinct for us to sever support for their work and turn them into pariahs. But society doesn't benefit from pariahs. Shitty people who do not have the opportunity to learn, change, or inspire change in others remain shitty people. They often continue to be shit, and they sometimes become martyrs for shitness. What all three of these men have said in their apologies is that this kind of material is not something they would do today. And that is clear from the work that they actually do today. And that change is something to celebrate. And that change is something they should be encouraged to talk about and encouraged to include in their work. In fact, Guardians of the Galaxy is a story about a bunch of shitty scumbags who redeem themselves by taking the opportunity to do good. These jokes were totally terrible and wrong, but they thrived in a time when the world was similarly terrible. And it is wonderful that we now live in a time where society can see that. But again, I do not think they should be free from consequence. I just think that the consequences should include the opportunity to change and the opportunity to do good, instead of simply being cast out into the wilderness. Thank you for listening. Please uh, continue the discussion in the comments. I still have a lot of thoughts and ideas floating around about this topic, and I would love to read and engage with your responses. Please like, share and subscribe. Peace.